Alrighty, good morning everybody. Welcome to Circle Time. Um, I hope you guys are all here and having a good day. Um, today is such a sunny day outside. It's been a little bit chilly though. It means that fall is coming and actually almost here. Um, that makes me really happy. Miss Emily really, really likes the fall. I'm not a huge summer person. Um, but we're going to hang for just a second or two, give a couple people a chance to, to log in and get here. Good morning, everybody. Welcome to Circle Time. Um, as always, I have, the, I have the usual planned. I think it's going to be really fun. Um, I've got some books, I've got some rhymes, and a craft project that um, may actually get you guys outside. It might be a fun project to do outside. So, um, as always, if you're watching this video live, I can see the comments. I'd love to know if you're here. Feel free to say hello. And Miss Emily's feeling a little silly today. <laughs> I've got some bubbles floating around today. I wonder what that means. You guys know I like, I like themes. Hi, Oliva. How are you today? I'm so glad you're here. I'm going to make a big mess in the library today. <laughs> so I'll put the bubbles away for now, but we're going to do something pretty cool with them later. So welcome, welcome. We'll go ahead and get started. Penny and Pearl say hi. Hi, Penny and Pearl. So glad you guys are here. I hope you're ready. Um, so I hope you guys all like bubbles because that is my theme today. In case you couldn't tell, we're doing... Um, bubbles. <gasps> Julian is here. Hello, Julian. How are you? I'm so glad you're here. Let's see. What book do I want to start off with? I'm looking to start off with this one. Hello, everybody. All right. So I'm going to start off with a book called Bubble Trouble. So this is Bubble Trouble by Tom Percival. Reuben and Felix had always lived next door to each other. They were exactly the same age, exactly the same height, apart from the ears, and they were both left-handed. They also had something else in common. Reuben and Felix loved to blow bubbles. What about you guys? Do you guys love to blow bubbles? You can already tell Miss Emily does. All sorts of bubbles, but mostly they like to blow really, really, oops, big bubbles. Oh my goodness, that bubble is so big, the fish can fit inside of it. That's a really big bubble, holy moly. It was their favorite thing to do, and they always did it together. Until one day, Reuben said, I bet I could blow a bigger bubble than you. And that was how the contest started. Hey, that's a good idea. It was quite friendly at first. Hmm. And look, he's got a bubble machine. So his friend says, hmm, I'm not sure that's allowed. But as their machines became more complicated, the game became less fun. My bubbles are the biggest. What Reuben and Felix needed were some clear rules. So they appointed a group of judges. Now they would be able to determine exactly who could blow the biggest bubbles. At last, the competition was official. Crowds flocked from miles around to see Reuben's and Felix's sensational bubble blowing machines. Look how big and complicated their machines got. Wow, they must be able to blow such big bubbles with them. The bubbles that they blew were huge, bright and wondrous. Each one was bigger than the last. Bigger than a bear? Oh no. They were bigger than a tree. That's a really big bubble. And then the biggest bubble over here, <gasps> bigger than a house. That's gigantic. Imagine being able to blow a bubble bigger than your house. 
but all Reuben and Felix could think about was winning. Instead of just trying to blow their own bubbles, they also came up with ingenious ways to cheat. So look, he's letting loose some hedgehogs, which are prickly. So when if a bubble would land on the hedgehog, it would pop. And he's letting loose bumblebees. Oh no. And the bumblebees will fly over to the bubbles and <gasps> pop them with their stingers. Oh no. Cheating is not very nice. And they said, the cheating didn't always work. Uh -oh. The hedgehogs fell asleep and the bees are going away. But Reuben and Felix refused to give up. Look, I'm sneaking around at night. The next morning, they both felt convinced that they would finally win. Until they turned on their blower bubble, <clears throat> excuse me, until they turned on their bubble blowing machines. There was a clanking and a creaking and a grinding and a groaning, followed by a very loud bang. Oh no. Now Reuben and Felix realized just how silly they had been. They didn't need all that complicated machinery. All they needed was a little bit of help. So they gathered everyone together. And on the count of three, they all began to blow. Slowly the bubble grew and it grew and it grew until together they had blown the biggest bubble in the world. Can you guys see that? That bubble's floating off into space. Everything was back as it should be. Reuben and Felix were best friends again. Yippee! And nothing was ever going to change that. Until Felix said, I bet I can jump higher than you. Uh-oh. Do you think there's another contest in the works? Maybe. What do you guys think? Do you think you could blow, you could blow a bubble as big as Felix's and... and um, Wow, well, I forgot the other guy's name already. So, why don't we do a rhyme? And as always, I have some fun little things to stick on my fingers. So, I've got some, I've got five big bubbles here on my fingers. So, we're gonna do a rhyme with our five bubbles. <coughs> Excuse me. So, we have Five big bubbles floating all around until one popped when it landed on the ground. And now how many do we have left? One, two, three, four. So four big bubbles floating high and free until one popped when it landed on a tree. Now how many do we have left? One, two, three. Three big bubbles floating quiet as a mouse until one popped when it landed on a house. Now how many bubbles do we have left? One, two. Two big bubbles floating down the road until one popped when it landed. Oh, I'm sorry, that's not road. Two big bubbles floating down to land until one popped when it landed in my hand. We only have one bubble left, one big bubble still floating in the air until it popped. Oops, there we go. When it landed in my hair. And now it landed on the floor. But that's a fun one. Let's do that again now that we know how that goes. Okay? So we start off with our five bubbles. So five big bubbles floating all around until one popped when it landed on the ground. Four big bubbles floating high and free until one popped when it landed on a tree. Three big bubbles floating quiet as a mouse until one popped when it landed on the house. Two big bubbles floating down to land until one popped when it landed in my hand. One big bubble still floating in the air until it popped when it landed in my hair. 
There we go. Now I have a bubble stuck in my hair. <laughs> Oops, let's see if I can get it out. There we go. So that's a fun little rhyme to do. I'll get them out of the way. I'm stuck. There we go. All right. So let's do another story. This one's called Bubbles. Oops. So this is Bubbles by Kit Chase. Kangaroo loved to blow bubbles. One day, she saw some mysterious bubbles. So she followed the bubble trail and found koala. There's koala blowing bubbles. Hello, said Kangaroo. Koala didn't say hello. Koala climbed a tree instead. Oh no. Hello, Kangaroo called. Koala still didn't say a word. Kangaroo took a lollipop out of her pocket. Koala didn't want it. She took out a pinwheel. Koala didn't want that either. Bother, said Kangaroo, slowly walking away. There's Kangaroo walking away. And there's Koala up in the tree. Kangaroo sat down to think and blow bubbles. Soon, some bubbles floated by again. Kangaroo and Koala blew friendly bubbles to each other. They blew small bubbles and big bubbles and crocodile bubbles. Oh my goodness, that would be cool to do. And tiger bubbles. Oh my goodness. It was a happy bubble party. Suddenly, the bubbles began to stick together and they grew bigger and bigger and even bigger. The bubbles had turned into a great big bubble monster. And it was heading right towards Kangaroo. Oh no. Yikes, squawked Koala. Help, squealed Kangaroo. All of a sudden, Koala felt brave. Let's go get that bubble monster, said Koala. And look, what are they doing? They're popping all the bubbles. Big old bubble monster. Pop, 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 pop! Kangaroo and Koala looked around. Excuse me. The bubble monster was gone. Hello, said Kangaroo. Hello, said Koala. Kangaroo had bubble gum in her pocket. And look, she shared her bubble gum with Koala. And they blew bubbles happily ever after. The end. Oh my goodness. They were having so much fun with their bubbles and they made a bubble monster. Luckily, I have never been able to make a bubble monster with my, with my bubbles. Um, so I don't think we have to worry about a bubble monster today. Maybe, we'll see. Um, so let's do another little fun rhyme. This one's got some action to it. Um, unfortunately, because of the way my camera is, um, I can't really do all of the actions, but I'm going to show you what they, what you, what you can do. So if you guys want to stand up and get ready, get all loosened up, we're going to say bubble, bubble, turn around. So you guys can turn around, bubble, bubble, land on the ground, bubble, bubble, float up high, bubble, bubble, float towards the sky, bubble, bubble, float down low. Bubble, bubble, land on my toe. Bubble, bubble, stop, stop, stop. Bubble, bubble, now go pop. <laughs> Let's do that one again. So bubble, bubble, turn around. Bubble, bubble, land on the ground. Bubble, bubble, float up high. Bubble, bubble, float towards the sky. Bubble, bubble, float down low. Bubble, bubble, land on my toe. I'm gonna to reach down and touch my toe. Bubble, bubble, stop, stop, stop. Bubble, bubble, now go pop. That's a fun one. Okay, 
If you guys want to sit back down, if you are standing up and doing that, it's a good time. We're going to do one more book and then we're going to do our craft project for today, okay? So this book is also called Bubble Trouble, but it's a different story than the first one we read, okay? So this is Bubble Trouble by Margaret Mayhe and illustrated by Polly Dunbar. So let's see what happens with this bubble trouble. Little Mabel blew a bubble and it caused a lot of trouble. Such a lot of bubble trouble in a bibble bobble way for it broke away from Mabel as it bobbed across the table where it bubbled over baby and wafted him away. Oh no, the baby's floating away in the bubble. The baby didn't quibble. He began to smile and dribble. He liked the wibble wobble of the bubble in the air. But Mabel ran for cover as the bubble, bob, bubble bobbed above her and she shouted out for mother who was putting up her hair. So there's mother putting up her hair and there's baby floating away in the bubble. At the sudden cry of trouble, mother took off at the double. For the squealing left her reeling, made her terrified and tense. Saw the bubble for the minute, for a minute with the baby bobbing in it, as it bibbled by the letter box and bobbed across the fence. In her garden, Crystal, Krista Gribble had begun to cry and cavail at her lazy brother Greville reading novels in his bed. So there she is and there he is reading in the bed. There's the baby floating over the fence. And there's mom trying to catch up. But she be bellowed, gracious Greville, as she groveled on the gravel when the baby in the bubble bibble bobbled overhead. Oh my goodness. In a garden folly, Tybal and his jolly mother Sybil played a game of Scrabble, shouting shrilly as they scored. They both began to babble and scrabble with the Scrabble as the baby in the Bubble Bibble Bobbled by the Board. Oh my goodness, this is getting to be a tongue twister. And look, they ruined their game. They got so um, excited to see the baby floating by in the bubble. Then crumpled Mr. Copple and his wife, a crabby couple, set out arm in arm to hobble to, and to squabble down the lane. But the baby in the bubble turned their hobble to a joggle as they raced away like rockets, and they've never limped again. Even feeble Mrs. Threeble, in a muddle with her needle, matching pink and purple patches for a pretty patchwork quilt, when her older sister told her, tossed the quilt across her shoulder and set off in a totter in her tattered tartan kilt. So now everybody's starting to chase the baby in the, bottle, in the bubble. At the shops, a busy rabble met to gossip and to gabble. Started gibbering and goggling as the bubble bobbled by. Mother, hand in hand with Mabel, flew as fast as she was able. Very troubled lest the bubble burst or vanish in the sky. Oh no, that would be terrible. Then after them came Greville Gribble in his nightshirt with his shovel. All about a haunted shovel. Oh, excuse me, all about a haunted hovel held high above his head. That's the book he's reading. He's reading a book about a haunted house. Followed by his sister Krista, though her boots had made a blister. Then came Tybal pulling Sybil with the Scrabble for a sled. So there they all come. And there they come with using the Scrabble for a sled. After them, the couple couple came cavorting at the double. Then her jogger, quite a slogger, joined the crowd who called and coughed. Up above the puzzled people, way up towards the chapel steeple, rose the bubble with the baby slowly lifting up aloft. Oh no, the bubble's getting higher and higher. There was such a flum a diddle, Mabel huddled in the middle. Canon Dapple left the chapel, followed by the chapel choir. And the treble singer Abel threw an apple core at Mabel as the baby in the bubble bobbled up a little higher. 
Oh, they giggled and they goggled until all their brains were boggled as the baby in the bubble rose above the little town. With the problem, let us grapple, murmured kindly Duck Cannon Dapple. And the problem we must grapple with is bringing baby down. Now baby's floating still higher. Now let Mabel stand on Abel, who could stand and turn on Tybal? Who could stand on Greville Gribble, who could stand upon the wall? While the people from the shop will stand to catch them if they fall. Um, I'm sorry, I read that wrong. While the people from the shop will stand to catch them if they topple, then perhaps they'll reach the bubble, saving baby from a fall. But Abel, though a trouble, was a rascal and a rebel, fond of getting into trouble when he didn't have to sing. Pushing quickly through the people, Abel, Abel clambered up the steeple with nefarious intentions and a pebble in his sling. So he's got a slingshot. And what do you think he's aiming for? Oh no, he's aiming for the baby in the bubble. And Abel quietly aimed the pebble past the steeple of the chapel at the baby in the bubble wibble wobbling way up there. And the pebble burst the bubble. So the future seemed to fizzle for the baby boy who grizzled as he tumbled through the air. So there's Abel shooting off the pebble and the pebble burst the bubble. And look how high up the baby is. Oh my goodness, and it's gonna fall to the ground. What a moment for a mother as her infant plunged above her. There were groans and gasps and gargles from the horror-stricken crowd. Sybil said, upon my honor, there's a baby who's a goner. And Krista hissed with emphasis, it shouldn't be allowed. But Mabel, Tybal, Greville, and the jogger, christened Neville, didn't quiver, didn't quaver, didn't drivel, shrivel, wilt. But as, but as one, they made a swivel, and with action, firm but civil, they divested Mrs. Threeble of her pretty patchwork quilt. They took the quilt. What are they going to do with that? Oh, what calculated catchwork! Baby bounced into the patchwork, where his grizzles turned to giggles and to wriggles of delight, and the people stared dumbfounded as he bobbled and rebounded till the baby boy was grounded and his mother held him tight. They caught the baby with the quilt and now the baby is safe. And the people there still prattle. There's lots of tittle-tattle. For the glory and the story, young and old folk, gold and gray, of how wicked trouble Abel tripled troubled with his pebble, but how Mabel and some others saved her brother and the day. The end. Oh my goodness, that was a little scary there for a minute. I thought the baby was going to be in trouble. But in the end, the patchwork quilt caught him and he was all safe. So, are you guys ready for our craft today? Um, today is a pretty easy one, but I do recommend if you're doing it inside on the table, cover the table like with some newspapers. Um, if you have like a cookie sheet, that might be a good idea too because we are going to do some crafting with bubbles and it can get a little splashy and a little messy. So I'm gonna show you guys what I made earlier. So this one isn't quite as good. This was my first one, but can you guys see that there's bubbles in my colors? I painted this picture with bubbles and there's all kinds. I don't know if you can see it, the light. Oh, there we go. You can kind of see it. There's like splatters all over. Those are all from bubbles. So then I got a little bit better at it and take a look at this. You guys can see that I did all kinds of painting with bubbles. So I'm going to show you guys how to paint with bubbles. So I'm going to tilt this down a little bit because you're going to need to still see me a little bit. Okay. So to do the craft today, you're going to need uh, some bubble solution. You can use store-bought or if you make your own that will work as well whatever's going to make some bubbles um, I have a tray here with my two cups so yeah so tray two cups two straws 
um, and some food coloring. Today I used red and blue. So you're gonna have to have your grown-up help you with the food coloring so you don't spill it all over. Um, apparently you can use tempera paint for this as well. Um, I use the food coloring. Tempera paint is supposed to work well as well. Um, always have some extra paper towels just in case things get too messy. And some paper to um, do your painting on. So I'm actually gonna show you guys two different ways today to paint with bubbles. So what I did, and let's see if you guys can see, I poured some of my bubble solution into each of the cups and then I added a bunch of drops of food coloring. So I made it, I made it really red and then I made the other one really blue. Okay, and so this is when you have to be really careful not to get it all over because it might make your fingers all different colors. See, now my finger is blue. I'm gonna be blue all day. How silly. So, okay, so I've got my two colors. So the first way we can paint with bubbles, and actually, real quick, I'm gonna take a pair of scissors. It's gonna be easier to show you guys if I cut my paper in half and make smaller. You guys can use big paper, you can use gigantic paper, you can use teeny tiny paper, whatever kind of paper you want to use. Is that only one piece? No. There we go. I knew there was more than one, so I'm going to use like a half sheet. So the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to take my red, and you guys can again use whatever colors you want, and I have it in the tray to help contain the mess, just so I don't get bubbles everywhere. So you guys may want a tray like this if you have like a baking sheet or if you're outside where you're not going to make a mess, um, where it's not going to matter as much. That would be perfect. So I have my straw. I put my straw in my red bubble solution. And now you're going to do something that your, your grown-ups have probably told you not to do with like your glasses of milk or your glasses of soda. But we're going to blow some air into the bubble solution until we have bubbles coming up out of the, the cup. Okay, so I'm gonna do that now. And then once you have bubbles coming up, you're gonna take your piece of paper and just kind of squash them. And you'll see that that will get bubbles on your paper. And then they start to leave color. Can you see that? So I'm gonna do that again. I'm gonna do another red one. And make sure you guys are blowing gently. If you blow really, really hard, you're going to make a big mess and your bubbles will pop. So there's another one and all those bubbles are going to pop. And let's see, I'm going to do one more red one. And one more. Squish. And there we go. I've got more bubbles on my paper. And you can see the other ones have dried or popped and left behind really cool bubbles on my picture. So I'm going to put that down for a minute and I'm going to switch now from my red, I'm going to leave it there, to my blue. So again, I'm going to blow gently, but I'm going to make it so that bubbles come up out of the top. Take my straw out and go right on top. And you can use the same piece of paper because you'll see how sometimes the colors will start to mix and sometimes they'll be separate. So you can get a whole bunch of different colors on here. If I do another one and go squish. Oh, that's looking pretty good. Can you guys see the different colors on there? It's really hard in this light. Um, I'll have to take a picture of my bubble paintings and put them in the comments below once this video is posted. Uh, let's do one more blue one. So one more blue one. Give it a squash. There we go. So now, once those bubbles pop, I'm gonna let this dry. And you guys can see, I have some really, really cool bubble artwork. How neat is that? All right, so I'm gonna let that one dry. And then if you guys feel like experimenting and your grown-ups say it's okay, this one gets a little bit messier. So this one you definitely wanna try outside if you can. 
Um, I'm actually going to use a bigger piece of paper for this one just to see if I cannot make such a big mess on the table. You can also take the bubble wand that's inside your bubbles, or if you have another bubble wand, I'm gonna blow some bubbles. Oh my goodness, so many bubbles. So um, I can take my bubble wand and inside my colored bubbles, I can put it in and then if I carefully, I'm gonna back up here, if I carefully blow some bubbles across the paper, you know, and you can try to catch them. Oops. Oops. This one doesn't make quite as much color, but it does still make some interesting things. I'm gonna do it one more time and then show you what happens to my piece of paper. Oops. Whoa, that was a gigantic bubble. Did you guys see that? And I still have a bubble up on my piece of paper. So let me show you now what happens when that all happens. Is Can you guys see all the splatters of blue all over the piece of paper? That's from where all of the bubbles popped. They popped and made really cool splatter um, patterns. And then up here at the top, a bubble actually landed on the paper for a little bit. And then when it popped, it left a ring. So how cool is that? You guys can try it again with the red or whatever colors you want. You can mix more than two colors if you guys have the time. Julian thinks this is silly. Julian should know Miss Emily's pretty silly by now. I hope you guys do try it. It's lots of fun. Whoops. I've been having fun blowing bubbles all morning. Whoopsie. The red doesn't want to cooperate as well today, I guess. Oh, there we go. And sometimes when you get the bubbles to work, And you get them to land on the page. There we go. Let's see if you guys can see that. It's really light, but sometimes you can get whole circles. No, it doesn't show up on the camera. But I have some circles here of where a whole bubble landed and popped. And it made um, circles of color. Yeah, it's not really showing up, but you guys can see all the splatters on there. So. I hope you guys get a chance to try this silly, silly craft. It's really fun to do outside where you can blow bubbles and not have to worry about making a big mess. Um, here's my first piece that I was doing before. Again, the light is kind of bad. I can't, it's hard to show it to you. But I have all kinds of bubbles that made a really, really cool piece of art. Okay? So I hope you guys get a chance to try it. Let me know. Always feel free to send pictures. We always love to see what you guys have been up to and if you guys got your craft to work. And I always really especially love to see your, oops, my camera's crooked, your artwork because you guys are such great artists. You guys have sent me lots of stuff over the past couple weeks that we've been doing this and you guys have been so much fun. Um, so that is actually it for today. Um, I'm going to clean up because now I got bubble stuff everywhere, but that's okay. Um, it'll be easy to clean up. So I'm going to say goodbye, guys. And actually, I'm just going to let everybody know that next week, beginning next week, somebody else is going to be doing this circle time. Um, Miss Emily is actually going to be taking a little bit of time off from the library um, because um, Miss Emily is going to have a baby. So it's almost time for the baby to come. So I have to take some time off the library to go home and get ready and then be able to take care of my new baby. So I hope you guys have fun. Somebody else will definitely be here to do circle times with you guys. But thank you guys so much for tuning in over these past weeks, over the summer. I've had so much fun with you guys and I can't wait to see you guys when I come back, okay? So have a great, great day. Enjoy the sunshine and the cool weather today and I will see you guys again really, really soon, okay? 
Bye. Oh, thank you. <laughs> Bye, everybody. Bye-bye. <laughs>